Just macking on pizza. Why are you doing chewing your mouth open? <laughs> I mean, to be That's fair, I, I ate a cheeseburger in his video. That's so, true. I don't care if you the pizza. I was drinking but. coffee in both of my Do the video. This video is sponsored by Speedsoft Official. It's Jacob from Team Designated Drinkers and TSA, so True Stars Airsoft, um, not the airport security. Uh, on my left here, I have Patrick from Local Legends Airsoft, and then on my right, I have Nick from A Side Airsoft. They're also not the airport security. Yeah, also. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they're going to be helping me today uh, film this video. It's just an unboxing and review of one of the most controversial guns right now in airsoft i'd say i mean i don't know about you guys but nah, it, it was, was at least it was it maybe not as much now but it was um so i'm just gonna go ahead and get started we have the g and g ssg1 aka the speedsoft gun one produced by g and g armament uh, the hate around this gun comes from the fact of its its stock and its barrel just its overall design what kind of mags come The the G and G one. The super. Oh, the high cap. No, the mid cap. Oh. oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the super feed. Yeah. Yo, that's nice. Yeah. It comes with this. Yes. That's I nice. love these. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open the box. Upon opening the box, on the left side of the gun, you have your owner's manual that tells you how to take apart and maintain the gun. On the middle of the box, you have the gun and the magazine, along with the de-jamming rung placed underneath. On the right side of the gun, you have your warranty and your hop-up instructions. I don't have the orange tip on mine anymore because I took it off to put on the UVT tracer. Um, technically, it would sit inside the orange piece, but I set that aside and just don't use it. Um, so this gun is super controversial in the airsoft world right now due to its unique drop stock, which you take an Allen key here, you turn it, and the stock will adjust. Um, and then also it's no Picatinny, no kind of rails, just cylinder barrel. There are rails on the orange tip though. Yes, there are rails on the orange tip so you can yeah. mount a light um, or a grip or whatever it, on the top or the bottom. Um, a lot of people tend to put a TLR on top because they play like this. I don't have that same kind of play style when I hold the gun. It does have a flat trigger for a speed soft style of play uh, to give you a better performance and a more snappy shot. Um, it does have ambidextrous mag releases on the right and left side right here. You pull the bolt catch back to dust cover that shows you the hop up. It also does have a working bolt release right here. So if you hit the function, it actually does drop it and you close your dust cover. I like how they went for some form of realism on the yeah. Yeah, on like the why even bother? Custy gun. Yeah. <laughs> so then over here, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the stock to show you what that does. Where's the Allen key? Simply just turn the Allen key and unlock it. And then the stock will adjust to various different <laughs> angles all the way down here <laughs> and straight up and back. And you can just, I mean, that's a little ridiculous, but. <laughs> it's a little more ergonomic than I thought, yeah. I'll be honest. I typically play with it right about there. That's what I like. I mean, it's a little low, but it's not too bad. It's just enough to put it on your shoulder and still give you a nice sight line down your gun if you want to run optics i ran optics on this when i did film my gameplay with it this gun's a lot of fun to use feeds amazing with the mag uh has a super super good fire rate or response trigger response rate uh, we're going to go ahead and get into some shooting here in a second at the shooting range. I can confirm mm -hmm. that it is nice because um, I've he's let me play a game with this. Um, and I was, only on a, yeah, I was only on a 7.4 LiPo and um, it was it has some really nice trigger response. I actually really like the gun. I think one of the biggest reasons why I hated this gun when it first came out was because the actual... Um, the European model, it came with a blade trigger, not like the standard like ARP nine type trigger. It was like a really long, just blade trigger that Which was you like can still purchase and add into the gun later yeah, if you, you want. You can purchase it afterwards, but the thing is, they did that. I think simply for a marketing tool because they were just like, hey, um, 
everyone's freaking out about the fact that we have a blade trigger, and everyone's banning this at every field before the gun's even released. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have to make this an American model with just no with no blade trigger, <laughs> because people were scared of people being able to like walk the trigger like that, like a paintball marker. Yeah. But yeah, because like the, the fact that it already doesn't have a rail system, doesn't have like a conventional style stock. It's basically a paintball. It's basically yeah, it's a paintball kind of marker for airsoft. But like the thing is like. At the end of the day, like it, as long as it works and like it shoots airsoft BBs, I think that's one all of, I care about. I think one of the main issues people had with this was the type of person they were worried about using it, yeah, mm -hmm. or the type of person might attract sure. to an airsoft field. But honestly, in my experience, it's really not that awful. No, I mean those people are going to exist anyway, no matter so, what. Yeah, no. yeah, I mean, and they can build the same thing with an FE. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll, they'll throw to. they'll throw a polar star in their hands and then they just start just blasting people. Like, so I, this is my personal feeling on the blade trigger. Uh, response for it is I think it should be allowed um, oh, yeah. specifically not necessarily at your local like everyday play field but the speed shoppers where feathering is allowed and it's all about shooting fast and being yeah. fast and aggressive and strategic um, I definitely think I don't see a problem with allowing the blood sugar in that. but that's not my call I don't make the speed QB rules but I think it's definitely something that should be Something about the drop start is really good. Really nice. I know, it's like it's, really nice. It's like, it's it actually feels a lot more natural. And it's got two sling points on it, actually. Yeah, it it's does. Got, yeah. I'll show it right if here. For whatever reason. It's got one, to... yeah, I got one right here and one right here. So, I mean, if you wanted to collapse it, just run like a one point, which is typically what I run. You could clip it here. I bet it would hang really low. Um, clip it here. It's still hang pretty low, but not as much. Why yeah. Do that? Uh, uh, it's just not... I mean, it's not like as as it has a speed soft. Yeah, you're not going to be running like a sidearm. Right? Exactly. Yeah, you just kind of run around whatever the way is possible. Yeah. Now, if you're just casually playing with this gun because you like it, you like how it feels, you like how it looks, and you want to sling so you don't drop it. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I would assume that's probably why they had it. Yeah. Yeah. But that has some form of reason. If it is a sling point, it might just be a hole in the stock, yeah. but you can use it like that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get into some shooting. So here we did the chrono test, and you can see the gun chronos in at around 305 to a range at 308 with 0.25 gram BBs, which is perfect for any CQB environment. Here we get a nice side profile view of the gun before shooting it down the shooting range. Nice. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.